My name is Abhay Ashtekar. I am the director of the Institute for Gravitation and Cosmos at Penn State. And I'm also, I also hold the Abelly Chair in Physics at Penn State. Since I work in gravity, uh, I I've been quite aware of Stephen Hawking's work and followed it very closely. Uh, when, I, when I was a postdoc in Oxford, I frequently went to Cambridge to have discussions with him. And since then, we met in several conferences and I know him quite well uh, and so when the news came this morning I was quite uh, devastated to hear that this giant in our field has now passed away. The frontier f of physics or, uh, is always uh, elusive in many ways. I mean things that for example Einstein predicted 100 years ago have only been uh, uh, realized or, observa or observationally realized only last year through the discovery of gravitational waves and the same thing is going to be true with Stephen Hawking's work namely his greatest work uh, refers to the evaporation of black holes this prediction is widely believed to be correct I do believe it, uh, it, it to be correct the details of this process however are something that people are still looking at in terms of theoretical completion a lot of work has been going on and in fact, much of it has gone on in this institute by our students and postdocs and faculty. And um, also at other places, uh, there is constant progress being made. And I do think that, in, you know, maybe in say five years time, the, at least the principal puzzles about black hole evaporation will actually be solved. People like to say that, well, you know, once in several centuries, there is a scientist like Isaac Newton or Albert Einstein or Charles Darwin uh, and then you know once a century there are scientists like uh, Werner Heisenberg who invented quantum mechanics uh, and Stephen Hawking so I would put Stephen Hawking as one of these scientists who comes among the top scientists who come about you know once a, once a century so that may be a quantification if you like of his scientific standing. It's not only that Stephen Hawking made these discoveries which are monumental, but that he did them in spite of his deep, deep physical problems, physical issues. And that really requires kind of courage that is really very difficult for us to imagine. For example, it is widely said that his discovery of black hole evaporation, which brought together these three fundamental areas of physics, can only be compared to Mozart's writing an entire symphony in his head. Because by the time Hawking made this discovery, his disease had progressed sufficiently that he could not really write. And he had to do all many of these calculations, so to say, in his head. So imagine someone who can do these things in such extreme hardships. And that really requires a courage, which I think really singles him out among the great scientists of this century.